What's up guys, today we are going to be building an insane outreach system that scrapes product hunt for AI tools and sends off emails 24-7. I'm going to show you the free version of doing this on a small scale, but this is a super viable system that you can use for outreach or go offer to clients. We're doing it all with no code tools, including browse AI for web scraping, make.com for automations, and Airtable as our CRM. If you're new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Gavin Thibodeau, and for the past few years, I've run a digital operations agency. Essentially, we're an agency that builds all the text solutions for other businesses, including automations, AI systems, databases, and even full-blown softwares. My goal of this channel is to teach you everything I've learned and show you how to build systems that are actually valuable to businesses. No experience is required. I'm going to show you how to do everything so you can literally just follow along and have this automated system ready to go. If you want access to all my make.com automations, Airtable templates, a ton of different AI systems, and weekly support calls, then join my community on school digital operations. We're a growing community full of some very smart people, but anyways, let's jump into it. In this one, we're going to be building this insane automation. Basically, what this is doing is finding emails from product on tools. We're looking at AI tools, specifically the most recent ones. And we're going to be writing an email and sending off an email pitching our service. And this is all going to run automatically for us. We're going to configure the bot to scrape the products and then scrape the product details. Then we're going to actually Google search the contact information. ChatGBT is going to identify the best email address. And then we're going to write an email with ChatGBT as well and send it off. If we don't find an email, we'll still populate our error table and we'll just go through and find emails ourselves for those ones. Basically, uh, this is just a basic version, believe it or not, of what I actually built for a client. For a client, we were using Apollo IO and other enrichment sources all right within make here. So to find actual email addresses from people, but when you do Google search products, you can typically find like a hello email, a partnership email, a sales email and stuff like that. And for my client, it worked pretty well, right? He was a, or he is a AI influencer. He's a human who posts about AI stuff and AI tools and stuff. And he charges a lot of money for reels about specific products. So basically he just wanted to be finding the newest AI tools, reaching out to them, offering to post, you know, sponsorships on his page, on his Instagram, TikTok, whatnot. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. You can enhance this if you want to do searches with Apollo or Zoom Info, you know, sources like that that actually find specific people's email addresses. But this is a really good use case. It's all going to be free. But the exception of the chat GPT, you do need to input $5 in order to use the API that we'll be using here with GPT-4. But other than that, you can pretty much do all of this stuff for free. Browse AI is what we're doing to scrape. There will be a limitation with how much you can do with browse. But all in all, this is still a super cheap way if you do upgrade browse tools like clay are just super super expensive so a lot of times it's easier to build something in house like this with make and Airtable. but anyways let's start building so first you'll need to sign up for browse ai and we're going to be building a new robot here so browse is just the easiest way to web scrape literally you're just putting in the url clicking around what you want to scrape and then boom it scrapes it you can also set up monitors so basically this is just going to look at our ai tools and when it identifies new ones it's going to run the automation that we set up but first we're just going to extract structured data so product on is an option but it's not the specific page that we want which is why i'm going to input that url that i want but browse has a bunch of pre-built robots and stuff that's literally ready to go guys if you want to monitor a specific company's info on linkedin job post on indeed yelp i mean everything you can go look at all these different connections here it's unbelievable and super powerful and it makes it just so easy to scrape the web which used to take a lot of programming knowledge to be able to achieve but anyways let's go grab the specific url that we want on product on so when product i'm gonna to go to products here and select ai specifically my client was looking for ai tools and then we have the most loved here but if you scroll down you can go to recent and then it's going to find the most recent ai tools that have been on product on so not all of these are going to have websites when you click into them but a lot of them are which is awesome and we're going to deep scrape to grab these links right here and then google search this link along with contact so so back to this page let's go to most recent and we're just going to copy this URL and paste it over in the browse. So I'm going to extract structured data, paste this in. You'll see it has the parameters here of order most recent, and then we're going to start training robot. I'm going to use Robot Studio. I've also used the Chrome extension. Both work just fine. And it's going to take you to a, an interesting looking page like this. And you're going to have this robot guy here. He's going to be following you around everywhere you scroll, which is interesting, but it's pretty cool. And now we're going to be capturing text. So we're going to capture from a list. And now, as you can see, you literally just select the list that you want. So we don't want any of these most loved. 
Uh, I don't think AWS is going to be sponsoring us on Instagram, but we do want this stuff right here. So I'm going to grab all of this, just going to literally click right there. And then browse is going to do the rest of the work for us. And look at that. We have everything along with the product description, the product link to that product page, which we need and the image. We don't really need that. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove the rest of this stuff because basically this is all we're looking for right here. We'll go with a hundred and we'll save the captured list. Now it's gonna ask us where this load more is and it already found it. So we're just gonna confirm. Yes, this robot's literally going to load more. It's insane, we'll confirm. And that's all we wanna do. We'll press finish. And I'm just gonna call this most recent AI and we'll save. Now let's go run the task, make sure it all works and just make sure that it does what you're looking to do. And boom, now you'll see we have a nice CSV with the product name, description, and the link, which is amazing. And it got a hundred, which is unbelievable. Again, if you upgrade browse, you can do tons and tons more, which is what we did. Basically the premium version of this automation include a paid browse account, a paid Apollo account. And we actually use smart lead to send these off because you know, when we were just sending a bunch of emails from Gmail within make, that was a problem. But with smart lead, it intelligently rotates the inboxes you're sending from. But anyway, it's going to show you guys how to do the nice cheap free version here. We'll finish setup. And now we're going to build another robot that just grabs the details of that product page. So the end thing we're going to do here is actually a workflow where once we run this, we then scrape the details from that product page on a product hunt to grab the actual domain of the product. So I'm just going to go back in a product hunt, grab this one. Looks like we'll find the domain here. Yep. So we have the link and that's what I'm going to grab. It's not always going to have the link here, guys. So sometimes it's not going to populate perfectly, but this is usually what it looks like so i'm going to copy this url and we're going to go back to our dashboard and set up a new robot again extract structured data paste in uh, that just that product page this is just going to be the example we're not only going to grab the data from this page we're just going to show it because every page looks like this start training again we'll open up the studio and the only thing that we care is just text in this case and we literally just want this right here right we just want the domain we'll confirm we'll call this the link and yeah, we'll save the captured text and finish. I'm just going to call this product page. Now, again, it's going to make sure it does what we want. Perfect. I'll finish. So now what we're going to do is create a workflow. Basically, once this most recent AI tools runs, we want to default and run the product page one every single time. And then we'll get the actual link that we're looking for. So go ahead, click on a workflow. We're going to add a workflow. We'll call this most recent AI. And the first robot is going to be our most recent AI tools, right? So we'll select that next step. Second robot is the product page and the URL is just going to be the product link. Next step, we will do always, but uh, when we put this in production, you know, you might do monitoring. Once you scrape all of those, you're just going to end up switching that over at monitoring. Then you would change to one of these options. But right now for testing, we'll do always save and enable workflow and great. So now that this is on, let's go over to make. So in make, create a new scenario, select browse AI, and we're gonna do watch task execution finished. Add a webhook here, add your connection, and the robot that we'll select is that second one, the product page, and we'll do when a task finished successfully, we'll save, press okay. Now I'll save this guy and we're gonna make sure that it runs. We don't know what the data is gonna look like anyways to use in the rest of our automation. So let's go run a quick test. So in our workflow here, we'll run task. We only wanna do one right now to test. We don't wanna use all of our credits. So run that. All right, this worked. Now it should be triggering our workflow and getting the details from this page right here of web marker. So let's go check that. And yet in history of our product page, it looks like we found those details. We found the link, it's just a versal, which is great. Uh, not exactly what we're looking for, but let's go over here and you should see this right here. There are one record in the queue waiting to be processed. That's perfect. We'll go in, we'll run once, use existing data. And now we can see the data. So you'll see the input parameters here is just that link. You'll see captured text. We didn't do any screenshots or lists. So we know that captured text right here is what we're looking for, which is great. So let's build the rest of the automation. So you guys can go ahead and copy this base or you can just build it. It's super basic. I literally just did product name, URL, email, and status. The actual base in production for my client was significantly more complex than this. And you can get this absolutely cracked. But for now, just make sure you have something like this. And then let's go connect Airtable and make. So before we use Airtable, we are going to 
would be Google searching this company. Basically, the goal here is to Google search the contact to try and find an email address of this company. It's just going to be a general email, but this was actually the fallback with my client scenario. We would search Apollo and then fall back and just Google and try and find a general email if Apollo wasn't available. But if you just want to do this for free and build along with me, then go ahead and sign up for SERP API. It just allows you to Google search with an API. Once you sign up for SERP, it should look like this. And the first thing you're going to see is your API key. So be sure to not share this anywhere. I'm going to be blurring mine out, but copy this API key. And then we're going to go back over into make. So in make, we're going to be making an HTTP request. So go ahead, do make a request and go ahead and put your API key in the query string. You're just going to put API underscore key and paste that in. Great. And then just make sure your URL looks like this. This is SERP API slash search. And then our search right here is going to be the domain and then contact. Basically, this is just the endpoint to go Google search. And what it's going to give us back is 10 search results, the first 10 organic search results as if, if you were just searching on Google anyways. So go ahead, put this stuff in there and press OK. So let's go ahead and do a test. Let's right click on this, run this module only. And then for link, we'll just do company everybody knows, stripe.com just to make sure this API call is working and see how we can map this data. Make sure to parse the response or else it'll be messy. We'll try that again. Great, beautiful. Now, what we're looking for here is the organic results. And as you'll see, we get a snippet, we get the page, and uh, right here, you can contact us at sales at stripe.com. So that's probably what we would select in this case, but we're gonna always feed all of this data to ChatGPT so that it can decide which one to reach out to. So go ahead, add an open AI. We're going to create a completion. I'm going to go with GPT 4.0. If you don't see this and you only see mini or some other ones, you probably just need to upgrade OpenAI. And then we're going to do a system. And then you guys can paste in my prompt right here. But basically what we're doing is we're going to give ChatGPT all of the snippets. And we're going to say, we only want to find this domain's contact. If you can't find it, just say none. We don't care that much. We just want to find an info, hello, et cetera. We do say the best option is sales partnerships or brand emails. So hopefully it'll choose a sales over an info. It pretty much did before when I've tested this, but really good prompt here. Feel free to copy and paste it. Then we're going to add a user and paste them when I give you here as well. So basically here is where we're actually going to give it all of the organic results, right? So if I look at what I'm giving it here, uh, I'm giving it each item in the array. That's why it's one, two, three. And if we click into that, we'll be giving it in this case, the Reddit link, and then the snippet based on all this information. GPT should be able to make an educated decision. It might not be perfect, but it's been pretty damn accurate for me. So go ahead, steal this max tokens. You can just do zero. And lastly, if you go into advanced, we're going to have chat GPT respond in JSON. So response format here, JSON, and we're going to parse that JSON and we'll press okay. Save that. Now we're going to run chat GPT once just to see how it responds. We're not going to give it all of the data it needs right now, but we just want to be able to map that JSON properly. So you'll see in a second. So I'm just going to grab this snippet, right click this guy, run once. The link's going to be stripe.com. And then I'm just going to paste in that snippet there, but I'm going to add in email us at sales at stripe. We'll press OK. And beautiful GPT responded in JSON with result here, and it identified sales at stripe.com. So now let's go ahead and add a router. And this router is going to be whether or not it was found. So right here, if the result email is not equal to none, I always do case insensitive. Don't really know exactly how ChatGPT is going to respond. Then we'll just say email found, right? So if it doesn't say none, then the email was found. Press OK. And then this row is going to be if it did say none. We're going to say none. Don't know if they're going to put quotes there or what. So I'm just going to make this contains beautiful. So now we're going to have another ChatGPT here actually write the email. You don't have to do this. You can just do a templated email that says, hey team, sponsor me on Instagram or whatever it is you're selling. But in this case, wanted it to be a bit more unique. See if we could take some of that data from the snippet as well to add in, you know, some relevant info about the company. So again, create a completion for a system. You guys can paste this in again, press zero there or press OK. And then we're just going to grab the same user as here. Copy this stuff. Paste it in right here. Basically, we're just giving it all this data again, telling it, okay, we only care about relevant information related to our specific domain, craft up an email. We give an example of a good email in HTML as well, because that is how our make module likes it. So let's go ahead and add a Gmail, send an email. Again, you guys can do this with smart lead or instantly or a tool like that to avoid spam. If you're going to be doing this at scale, this will be going to the email we found. But since I'm just testing, I'm just going to put my own email in here. But when you put this live, you will actually put the email you got right here, this right here. 
Subject can be whatever you want it to be. And then the content is just going to be the result from GPT. Now, last thing is updating that database so we can keep track of all this stuff. So go ahead, add an Airtable. We're going to be creating a record. We'll select our product on tools and let's paste this stuff in. So we do in our prompt have GPT respond with the product name. So you can paste that guy in like that. This is going to be again from our guy right here. The email will be the result email and the status will be email sent. Press OK, and that route is good to go. Now for the fallback here, if the email was not found, then we're just going to populate this guy in our table just like this. So again, we're creating a record and we're just not going to have the email in this case. And then we're going to mark this status as not found. So we can have another view in our database of just the emails we couldn't find this way so that a VA or yourself or whoever can actually go through and find those emails. Perfect. We'll press OK. Auto align this, save, and now let's go over to browse and run it. So now I'm going to run this guy with 100, run the task, and let's see what happens. I'm going to turn this guy on so that we have it running once this all completes. All right, so it looks like this guy finished successfully. We got 100 products here. We got the product links. Now the workflow should be getting the links to the actual product. And these guys are running, so let's check the automation. And it is running running like crazy let's go check Airtable, and here we go so as you can see a lot of these were not found but it is finding some right now which is exciting it's sending off emails which means my email is going to get blown up with a bunch of emails in this test so just keep in mind guys if you do do this live make sure you're actually sending off to the people and i'm just going to create a new view here of found i'm going to filter and you'll see i was testing this as well before so it is going to find some that i already had in here but uh, you could just simply add a search records if you were doing this. And then if you actually have monitoring going on the browse, then it's not going to just send in tools that's already scraped. Cool. So there you have it, guys. We found some emails. Again, we did a significantly larger scale for an actual client, which is what you should do with paid browse, paid everything. But super profitable stuff here. I would go through the ones that the email wasn't found and actually go try and find them or get a service like Apollo or Zoom Info, which will allow you to find those emails. And that is what we did with my client as well. And then we just blasting these off all the time the bot you can set up auto rings which is running all the time it's finding these new tools finding these email addresses and basically doing outreach for you so you don't have to so go ahead set this one up guys looking forward to seeing what you do with it and looking forward to seeing what you think and yeah i'll see you in the next one